So basically what we did is um, we met up a weekend in Berlin, took a bottle of wine, wrote down everything that we like and called <laughs> that a, bo- a, a business. So a lot of people say to us, oh, that's such an interesting combination. I've never seen that before. And I'm like, no, that makes sense. Because it's basically what the Noor van Boven and Anna Brandt like, and that is a company. This is Female Business Angel Podcast. Your go-to destination if you're a business angel or would like to get into angel investing and don't know where to start. Or if you just want to find out how we tick. We're Tina and Katja, both business angels from Berlin. Well, I'm a VC now. We will interview established female business angels about how they got started and how it is going, including all the best tips and tricks. So get ready for some insider stories and personal empowering moments and revelations with these incredible women. Welcome to this journey with us. This is Female Business Angel Podcast. My name is Tine, and today I will be joined by Noor van Boven. Noor van Boven had a steep career in HR and startups, starting at SoundCloud and then moving over to N26 as Chief People Officer. She can draw upon this experience to consult and invest in some of the hottest startups from Series A+. She has a very original way on how she structures the way she works today and how she gets into the best deals. So, welcome Noor. Hi, no, it's so nice that you're with us today. Um, yeah, start off by who are you? What do you do? Uh, hi, Tina. Yeah, it's great uh, to be here on your podcast. I love listening to all the other episodes. So I hope I can keep the bar level up as well as all the uh, predecessors did. Um, so I'm Noor. Uh, I'm Dutch. Um, I live actually already in Berlin uh, close to nine years. Um, probably one of the better decisions in my life. Although I moved to Berlin to join SoundCloud and I was convinced that the headquarters of SoundCloud were in San Francisco and in my mind had already decorated a California very small <laughs> apartment. It seemed that the headquarters was in Berlin, so this is where I ended up. Super fun journey. Um, uh, I was the people leader uh, there and it was also my first tiptoeing in the world of um, uh, private companies, VCs, investment scene and start and skill ups and got completely hooked on it and was more career defining than I probably realized when I decided to join them. Um, after that, I joined N26, uh, the mobile bank, very scaling journey, quite different than uh, my experience uh, at SoundCloud. Yes, yeah, so how many people were there when you joined at N26? When I joined N26, a little over 200 people. Uh, and when I left, around 1,700. Uh, wow. And that growth, I was there for about three and a half years. But the growth really happened in two years. And that um, was super interesting, very painful at times, uh, but also a really interesting journey. Also to see that, because a lot of people was asking me, like, but isn't it unhealthy to go to that level of growth? Yeah, it's unhealthy, but it was also inevitable, right? So it was not a choice of like, now we are going to grow. It was a following of success um, and a great learning journey. And for me, another step, because now I I was part of the leader team at SoundCloud, but I was really on the executive team at N26. So it also gave me a different relationship Mm. to boards and investors, And a whole new insight in the market, which also helped with the last step that I took, where I'm currently at as uh, the co-founder of Invested, together with Anna Brandt. So tell us about Invested. How did that happen and what do you do? Yeah, so basically what we did is um, we met up a weekend in Berlin, took a bottle of wine, wrote down everything that we like and called (laughs) it a, a business. So a lot of people say to us, oh, that's such an interesting combination. I've never seen that before. And I'm like, no, that makes sense. Because it's basically what the Noor van Boven and Anna Brandt like, and that is a company. Um, But basically what was on the list was we both have always been very passionate about the position of women in work. Yes. Um, Modernization of work. And uh, that's also why we like working in the tech industry, because from an HR perspective, the innovation and being on the forefront really happens in the tech industry. Um, 
And we really wanted to invest. Like we like working with founders. I think all of the operators um, uh, on the on the podcast, well, who are listening, will recognize that you need to have a little bit of a quirky mind if you give your life to make someone else's dream work, right? So you, <laughs> it's a certain way how you're wired, and we really like to contribute uh, to big thinkers who want to do new things and, and, and encourage them. And basically what it landed in is that we help later stage founders um, uh, with their growth challenges on people and organizational topics. And the money that we make with that, we reinvest in the startup scene. And our investment focus is really on the future of work. And then specifically when work tech or the future of work is linked to fintech because we have a very strong fintech network when it comes to uh, VCs and other founders that we invest with. Um, yeah, that is for us really the core niche. And then on the side, we are um, we are focused on underrepresented founders, but we don't limit our investment position to that. But also what came out over time is that we really want to spend our time in encouraging other women to join the ecosystem because it's not yeah. only about investing in them, but also making sure that we demystify a little bit this investment world um, because I think that like definitely the whole myth and, and the unawareness of the terminologies used or the networks that are going around is holding back a lot of women to join the ecosystem while they have a very strong position to play. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I think that's that's lovely. And it's, I mean, for us, that's also such a drive at AUXO. Um, so... Yeah, it's. Uh, I sometimes even say like, "Oh, that's kind of making the whole scene more female, including the investors, is just as much of an incentive for me as, um, or motivation for me as getting the um, getting the female founders uh, financed, um, because it's just it's it's a flywheel, and like if one thing is out of sync, the other one is not going to fix itself. So, um, yeah, so that's, true. Yeah, and it and and you are you perceiving it to be a very supportive scene or, um, like. How do you see your... So the interesting, of course, if you start with two, you have more guts, right? Like anyone who used to, who has a brother or sister knows that as a child, when you, you feel the courage of your sibling being there, you did more daring stuff. The same is with business, right? So mm. when we wanted to tap into investment, um, we basically... We wanted it, but we had no clue what we were talking about. So it just started with the two of us reaching out to everyone we knew in the ecosystem and basically contacting them. Hi, we want to be an investor, but we have two problems. We don't know how it works and we don't have money. So mm -hmm. can you help us with that, right? Mm -hmm. And literally, and most of those contacts were men, by the way. Um, and all of them were like, that's so cool. And then some people told us, no, you only need money. Like it's super simple. Like there's no nothing to know. It's just you need to have money. And then in the next conversation, they would tell us like, no, oh, but you don't need money. There bypasses for that. You just need to know how it works. So we took the two optimized approaches That's and we're so like, fun. okay, we can tackle both. Um, and in the be beginning, and I think that that is really important for people who are not in investing yet to realize. Every new system that you enter is intimidating because you don't know the language. And whether that system is a new company or a new country or the investment scene. So in the beginning, Anna and I had a Google Doc and we wrote down every word that we didn't know, which basically with the first conversation was a very long list. Um, and we afterwards would Google all the words. And at one point, I still remember the call that afterwards we called each other like, I understood it all. Yes, me too. Me too. <laughs> um, and then when you understand it all, all the intimidation falls away. It also comes with a slight disappointment because then you realize that you always have the idea in that system that everyone knows what they're doing. And then it doesn't matter what the system is. You always figure out that people in general don't really know what they're doing. So that's also the same in investment. Um, so when you get in the system and it becomes comfortable, then 
then you can really make the next step, right? And uh, we have found that in every step of the journey, whether it was the entry of understanding what we were doing, but also making the next steps and really starting to mastering it, starting to see where are we actually having a benefit or where are we better than the average, where are we not so good and really need to educate ourselves further. That ecosystem has been generous from the beginning in giving us access to information, access to the network, but also feedback on how we are positioned in that ecosystem. Right. So tell us about some, so we get an idea about it at some, uh, some of your investments and sort of what stage do you invest in as an angel and, um, and, and what hooks you about investments when you see it? Yes, yeah, so we have basically two vehicles. So one is the investments that we do from our own money and the money that we make. And that is mainly um, uh, companies who are Series A and beyond. And very often are also our customers. So it are customers who allow us later on to also join uh, their investment smart. rounds. Yeah. Um, which for us very Because it's, it's not very... Like it's not very usual to do Series A plus as a business angel. So, um, no, it's also difficult because yes. of, um, um, I mean the the we have no money is is a little bit it is a little bit more than no money, but it's still not like we are not coming tiny in the for those rounds. Right? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. it's not meaningful. But um, uh, well, it's meaningful for us, but it's not meaningful for them. But the reason. We do have the times with us. We need to be transparent about it. Like a lot of the companies and especially around Series A and beyond are um, realizing that they need, they want people on board to understand people and org. So who understand how to scale a business, how to build out your leadership team. Um, And VCs that are in that stage are also more aware of it and like pointing it out to um, uh, the founders. So this also allow them because of our background, that we can join the cap table with such a small ticket at that stage. So there we're lucky, right? That's pure yeah. luck. But that's a, a good point because that's always what we talk about is you need your um, your positioning to get the access. And access, especially the stage that you're talking about, is very hard to get. And um, so I think it's it's uh, it's so smart what you're doing because you have such unique access plus you have incredible insight. So, and, and, and most VCs are going to pitch especially in like series A, they they will pitch their investors to say like, hey, look, we have unique insight, ex- access and we have unique insight and both you have as angels. So that's awesome in the way that you manage to combine that with your core business if you have one. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think what also helped was that at the beginning, people in the ecosystem really told us like there are a lot of people um, uh in investing, like you, you can relatively easily access it. And, and uh, I can talk about scout programs in a second. That's a second vehicle. But like there, there are more ways now to access the scene. But it's important to think about what am I bringing in, right? Am I Did I grow up in the VC world? Am I a former operator? Was I a founder? Do I have a certain expertise? Do I have certain networks that I can tap into or certain markets? Like, And by being really clear about where you differentiate and talk about that, not only with the founders, but also with VCs, so that you really put in people's mind, like, this is where we differentiate, helps in your access because people talk all the time. And Mm. this gives them a small hook that they always think about you from an angel perspective. And there's, as we know, one element of like, they want to have a female angel on Uh, the cap table, but why would they allow me in instead of you, for example, right? Mm. Like that's where you want to position differently. And then you also feel that you can have an added value for that investment, which is also more fun for you if you want to be an involved uh, angel. Yeah. Um, So investments that we um, did, well, one that we also did a follow-up round on, for example, is open up. Um, and that is an, um, uh, a mental health platform. So they offer uh, psychologists uh, as a benefit. And the benefit space for us is a very comfortable space. It's a space that we know really well. It links to the fintech. We have been the buyers of that product. So of we have a network uh, of future customers and we understand the product and the product proposition uh, very well. 
And then the second vehicle, where we focus more on uh, pre-seed and seed, is a founder program, very comparable to a scout program, where we invest with, um, we, we are the investors, but like all the people in the cohort know each other very well. Those are mainly uh, fintech founders, and that is funded by a VC. Um, and I think that there are sometimes some debates around the the uh, yeah whether to love or hate scout programs. I actually think that from a gender diversity perspective, and if you want to access the system new, it's a great way to safely tap into yes. um, uh, the world of investing. It also gives you more financial leverage to tap into the market uh, and do more. And there we have the same focus on HR tech meeting fintech, um, but then earlier stage. So those are more pre-seed or seed. And um, one of the investments that we did, for example, is uh, April, which is fertility benefits yes. platform, used to be called Oviava. I think you know the Yes, also. we co invest there. Well. Yeah, that's what um, um, so how did you talk about the scout program? Because that's something I think a lot of um, female angels that maybe do want some leverage on their money <laughs> are thinking about, like, how did you get into that? Um, yeah. Did you meet the people that run it? How, what was the process? Yeah. So for, um, we knew the people who were running it, but just, I think a month before it, We accidentally, someone told us about that. So before that, we didn't even know it existed. Um, and that is one of the things that um, uh, we do, but I also encourage other um, uh, female scouts to do, is tell more women that it exists, because a lot of people don't even know. Um, and then don't be shy. Like just say to PCs, like, I'm, I'm interested in, in uh, investing, Like I'm curious, I'm like I'm I'm just orientating myself around scout programs. I'm curious, do you have a scout program and how does it work? Not necessarily for me to join your scout program. I just want to have more information, and that is very low barrier, but it gets you on the radar. And we were lucky that we already knew this. We see it's a VC that we also work with. We support our portfolio companies. We do due diligence from the, for um, uh, them as well. So we're also involved in, in uh, um, some of the investment due diligence that they're doing. Um, so we didn't need to put ourselves up front, but we do refer a lot of women for future uh, cohorts. But we did, because before we were approached by them, we did ask other uh, VCs to get more information about scout programs. And almost all of them came back and asked us, like, do you want to join our program? So right. it's also about just put yourself out yeah. there uh, and just ask more information around it. Then at least they know you're interested. And if you don't fit their program or the target of the people that they would love to have joined, they will let you know that's also fine. Yeah. There are a lot of them. And can you uh, give them, it sounds like you spoke to a few uh, VCs offering scout programs. Can you talk a little bit about how you, um, how they compare, how the systems are structured or is it, are they all pretty similar? Are they, um, or, or is every program really different? I think in the structure, there are small differences, like financial differences, like how much do you get per year? I think most are between 100,000 and 250,000, and then you can get top-ups when you uh, run out of money. Um, at least the ones that we spoke to, there might be other ones out there, right? And um, uh, in general, you get like 20 to 30 percent uh, of the carry. How that's structured is very different. With some, it's per deal. Uh, after you pay back the deal, some it's like you get it after after they withdrew your original amount of money. So there are some of those financial details, but they, they're very relatively small. If you really want to get into the world of investment, I would not focus too much on that. I think what's interesting, more interesting, is that you have certain programs who are really designed to promote it. So they're very public about who, hey, look at a cell. They have an, an scout program that they're very public about who their scouts are. Um, so if you want to position yourself in the market as an angel investor, that can really help, right? Because they do the yeah. PR with you. There are also programs that are a little bit less known 
and do less on the PR side. That's, for example, the program that Anna and I are in. That's not not very um, uh, out there. But they invest a lot in um, uh, building your investment capability. So they're bringing the cohort together on a regular basis and they put in incentives to share your deal flow with each other, to co-invest with each other through the scout program. And what's important for you, there's no right or wrong of what's what fits you better, it's much more what is your need. So for yeah. me and Anna, most important was we want to learn from other people with experience. And this program has really given us almost the training course on how to do it. And that was for us most important. Yeah, I guess it's like looking for a job, right? You like say like, oh, what do I want to learn from this? What do I want to get from it? Is it just money? Is it learning? And then actually go out there. And I think it's really good to encourage more people to go out and and, and look at these angel programs because... There's so many competent women that just haven't got the funds to really do a lot of investments. And it's so important to do a lot and be able to write the checks and not just only look at things and pass all the time because you don't have the cash. And it's also horrible. <laughs> no, absolutely. Mm. And linking to that cash is then to close the loop completely. When you're then investing in companies and they're successful and they ask you advice, um, encourage them to be very generous with their equity plans to everyone in the organization. Yeah. Because yes. what we see is that in companies, if it's optional, men buy, this is, I didn't do whole scientific research, but just by 20 years of HR work, men are more risk-taking in their reward profiles than yeah. women are. So mm -hmm. if you say, do you want cash or equity, the guys will optimize more for equity and women more for cash. But we need women to take a larger percentage yes. of big exits as well, so Absolutely. that you will get the financial uh, power to also invest. So and even as a small angel investor on the cap table, you can still encourage to say, but can you also really check that you explain equity really well in your organization and encourage them to really make it accessible to everyone in the organization? You can say if you don't want to call names, but um, who's really good at this? Who's Who was really, in your experience, people you've worked with, companies you've worked with, really generous and really fair with the equity programs? It's different to the level that um, uh, people were generous about it. SoundCloud was very generous uh, about um, the equity that they handed out. It was a high equity play. But also they had the VCs and the portfolio ecosystem that was very Silicon Valley focused. So mm -hmm. also the, the um, what was being handed out was very comparable to that scene. I think in hindsight... Um, looking at the communications that we did with M26, we could have communicated more um, uh, around what the value of ex uh, uh, equity really was and educate people more. Yeah. So we did a lot, but we could even have upgraded it. I thought so, because a lot of people you speak to that were at N26 just for a number of years actually managed to get really good money out of it so far. Yeah, no, absolutely. And like with N26, the, uh, it was more... The terms were a bit stricter, mm. and um, um, uh, it sounds that literally every employee had equity. That was not the case with N26. But with N26, the um, founders, and I think founders take a really important role in it, were very passionate about people understanding equity. So they would speak a lot with the organization around what does it mean, what, what is the value that is in there. So they also focused a lot on helping to communicate what it is. Hmm. Um, and they had a culture of, they really wanted to build entrepreneurs. So it's a different cultural angle that you're taking. So they also invested in almost every alumni that started their own business. Right? Yes. So then you're, then you're also giving that example of like, we are going to have you start your own business, but you need to give that back to your staff. So, so that, They had a, that's a different angle to it. Not, one was not better than the other. Probably the combination of both would have been perfect. Um, but those were two elements that I really that's cool. liked of those two yeah. examples. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. That's really nice to hear. I like to hear that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so in general, like you sound like you're doing a lot of stuff. <laughs> And I think everyone starting angel investing kind of asks themselves like, oh, do I have time for this? How am I going to manage all the work? 
deal flow? Where, so how do you, can you give some insights on how you manage your time and how you deal with the deal flow that you get? Yeah, well, we didn't master how to do it. We, we just uh, go up and down in mastering it well to mastering it very poorly. <laughs> um, especially what we struggle with most is the time spent on the deal flow because there. Like we are not long enough into it to see that there's seasonality. You might know better than I do. Yes. But there are times where we have such an overflow and every like every opportunity looks amazing. I don't know if that's our filter or not. And you want to talk to everyone and at one point it's like, oh my God, I don't know how to follow up on it all. And then what's also poor on it is that if you then invest in more companies, Most of the companies, the most intense time is the first year after our angel investment is when they use our network the most, our insights the most, the most intense time. So we still need to learn how to balance out that intensity. Um, yeah. And also what we realize is then it's really busy and then we become really strict. So we're pushing back a lot and then it's really quiet and then we're going to accept everything again. So we are definitely, we haven't, I can acknowledge the problem. I unfortunately can't offer a solution. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think, but I think that's something that's so important for founders to understand that angel investing is like, it's people offering their money and their time. And you have to be mindful that there's limited resources on all fronts. So if someone says, listen, I just don't have time or money right now, that's just like, that's a fact. <laughs> And, um, but it is a bit like you, you are longer in the business, so you know yeah. that better. But in the beginning, it is a little bit, if, you, if you're not in it, trial and error, like how much time do I spend? Um, how often do I, as an angel investor, want to talk to a venture before I'm confident with taking the investment decision? Like there's, there's, a, there's a lot to unpack and find your ideal rhythm, I think, before... Um, in the angel investment business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you so, have some um, good suggestions? It's it's so hard. So I think my my biggest suggestion is probably to do what you did is to get a running mate, like to get someone that that that's with you, um, because otherwise you just get overwhelmed. And so you, because you just look at things like oh that's kind of interesting, and then you don't have the It's very hard to decide for yourself whether it's worth looking into further. So um, so if you have people doing it with you, like you have with Anna, you can just like say like, hey, look, I think this looks interesting. What do you think? And if you both think, yeah, that's really interesting, you look further. So I think you get a get a faster decision on um, let's spend more time or not. And also, I mean, and you don't need to have it like you guys have, that you have it in the same company. But um, I think if you just have like a pool of people that you look at things together, I think that's really valuable. And I'm... For example, I'm I'm part of a couple of Slack groups where people um, uh, post stuff. So we have this kind of with it, evangelistas, but there are some also smaller groups. And I always encourage everyone like also that are in the evangelistas or our big Slack group to get like smaller groups together. So you can, um, you have people that you know will understand certain topics and then get a really quick feedback loop with other people and, and build your opinion really quickly that way especially if if you think that people will have seen something as well. And it's actually like VC stood in this in a very similar way as well. There's, there's lots of exchange on ideas, especially when you talk to VCs that aren't competing like the micro VCs like, uh, like we are. So I think getting a lot of people to bounce stuff off quickly is really important. And the, the other advice um, that, that I like is to, um, if it doesn't like really, really kick you, you don't do it. Like it has to really, really grab you. Like, hmm, that's kind of oh, nice. It's not enough. Um, so um, there's something you need to like say like one thing why you look further into it. Is it the founder? Is it the market? Is it like something that has you have to say, be able to say it's really extraordinary? Then it's worth your time. That's another kind of filter we have and that we use for also for the fund. The Uh, first advice I, I really um, uh, like. The second one uh, resonates really well because I also, that's one of the learnings that we had is that in the beginning, we basically invested when they were too good to reject. That yes. was almost like the bar. 
Yeah, that's another question. It's like, are you going to be really, really sad if this gets successful? Like I always ask myself, if this goes really big and I didn't do it, do I have a good reason why I didn't do it? <laughs> yeah, and but I think that that's even like a bar above because like now yeah. we have that that's the combination of the two. Like now we had some of the investment that were like, oh, wow, we can also have this level of excitement, right? Like you find it out over time and then your bar increases also yeah, uh, yeah. a bit where you have the combination yeah, of yeah. like, will it, will it be painful if I pass on this? And do I have that wow effect? And then that you start exploring what is it that it intrinsically makes me really exciting from the beginning? Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I agree. That's really I'm also amazing. going to steal that you're using the word running mate for and uh, the co-partner, because I think it's a very, very good expression for it. Yeah, I mean, I I talk about this a lot. It, for us, it was the most critical thing to find each other. And I mean, beforehand, I did like, I had done one investment. I wanted to do more, but I didn't really get momentum. And um, then as soon as I had my gang together, and my, I mean, we did it with the motivation of building something bigger out of it, but like like you guys. But in any case, it's just so much better to have people with you and on your side and um, to, to bounce ideas. So I think, yeah, that still remains my top top tip for anyone. <laughs> yeah, like this. Yeah, yeah that's really nice. nice. So um, um, what is, apart from this, do you have any more advice to aspiring business angels? Um, no, I like the advice on like getting other people uh, together and also like, like what I shared in the beginning, and of course it was easier for me and Anna to be vulnerable and just stepping into it and just admitting to everyone, everyone, everything that we didn't know. But it has been so rewarding that I was thinking like I should have done that way earlier in my career. Like um, uh, instead, instead of being this insecure overachiever and finding it out yourself and just working harder, like just being very confident and transparent about what you don't know. And asking other people's yep. people to help to achieve your dream. It doesn't need to be your dream forever. If it just feels like an interesting avenue to explore, just yep. go and explore it. Um, yep. And like amazing doors are opening. Yeah, yeah and, and that resonates with me in terms of I um, part of when I thought about, oh, can I do angel investments? Because I hadn't had, I, did, I wasn't like massively rich, <laughs> but I thought like, oh, if I do an MBA, that's a lot more expensive <laughs> and here I can learn something too. So I really like, it's a, it's a, it's a high risk category, but it's also a high learning category. And for me, it's been actually kind of career defining. Um, so I think this is also another thing to kind of, yeah, to consider that how much you can take out of it. And I guess then coming back to what you said about, um, the angel programs, this is like with your angel investing, think to yourself, what do you want to get out of this? Is this just to park money? I'm not sure whether it's the best thing to do. Um, is it um, um, really be clear what you want to get out of it? Because you can get a hell of a lot out of it um, from because you're suddenly eye to eye with your co-investors, people that you maybe wouldn't have had access to. Um, just the things you learn from the founders as well, um, access to to events, all these kind of things, building your network out. It's it's so it's a really powerful thing to do. Yeah, absolutely, and it's a very fun learning journey. Like it's also, if I look at our profession, we follow what happens in the market. But now talking at all with all these seed companies around the future of work, and all of a sudden everyone is talking about. Web3, freelance uh, communities with tokenization, like it also triggers your thinking very differently about your own profession. Like yeah. fast forward, like what is the future going to look like? That's yeah. such a gift. Like there's no Netflix documentary that's going to give you that insight. Yes. Yeah. The insight is amazing. And just being around all these inspiring people all the time that, that bounce a new idea, it gets hard to kind of just stay in your, stay in your head in your small world. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Great. Um, we always ask, try to always <laughs> ask this last question. What is the one thing you would change in the world? Yeah, it, it, it would be equal access and equal opportunity, which, which sounds like a really um, a sleazy answer of um, uh, someone in a beauty contest. But um, I think like for if that could be changed, 
that would be a great thing. And like at the moment in the US, there's even a discussion about abortion. So sometimes it feels that not only are we very slow in elevating other countries when it comes to equality, we're also going backwards in some of our Western society. And I think we've been sometimes become a little bit lazy and taking it uh, for granted. And I think those moments in history like uh, today remind us that we need to keep on fighting for equal rights. And let's start with a very small part of it, women supporting women. But like in general, like we know when there is not um, uh, equality of access and opportunity, let's make sure that if we all contribute positively towards that goal, I do think we can make Maybe not change it completely, but we can make a wave. That's great. And I think it's also um, there. It's um, don't try to be too perfectionist about it, because I think in terms of impact, a lot of people were like, oh, but I don't really understand. How do I measure it? And uh, 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 I think if everyone just like pushes in the right direction. No, exactly. Like if, if like the podcast that you're doing, if it's convincing 10 women to join the investment scene, who are then investing in people who normally wouldn't have access to funds so they can start a business. I mean, it's that's the tri that's like a wave effect, that's rippling effect that is massive. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, I love the podcast. I'm, I'm, thank you for having me here. <laughs> Great. So um, yeah, I, yeah. So thank you very much for taking the time. Um, I think it's really inspiring how you can you so obviously center it all about people and advancing people. And um, that comes out of everything that um, that you say. And it's 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 really, really inspiring. So thank you very much for taking the time to talk. Cool. Thank you. This might be a bit of professional bias of people, of a people <laughs> leader. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for having me here. And it's very authentic how you talk about it. So I think you're on the right track. If you find somewhere like where you're authentic, where you get your motivation from, it's uh, that's that's awesome. Cool. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you.